Hello, uh, this is Gene Vino from the Susquehanna River Basin Commission and working remotely today with a colleague. Uh, hi, Tom, Tom Clark. Hi, Gene, good morning. Nice to be with you. Good to see you. You know, it's over a year that I met you and out of all of the employees at the basin, uh, I kept asking, where is Tom Clark? And they said, well, he works in the field most of the time. And when I had the opportunity to meet with you, you promised me that uh, one day we would take a trip and, and go into the field and show me what you do. Um, as I stated earlier, the SRBC runs 49,000 miles of, of waterways. That, I mean, that's a, that's a massive amount of water, uh, 27,000 square miles, and it runs from New York, Pennsylvania, and Maryland. And we all have our basic water resource projects that we work on, but for today's topic, it's going to be your specialty, and that is mine drainage. And you're the mine drainage program coordinator, correct? That's right. That's right. How many years working with SRBC? I uh, just turned 13, and then uh, I ran uh, my own uh, consulting business for seven, and I worked for DEP for three. Well, we're lucky to have you at SRBC. Uh, I understand that you're an environmentalist as well. Yeah, that's correct. Uh, grew up uh, around mining, but also uh, love the outdoors, so I, I think that kind of put me into the career path I'm, I'm on right now. Well, very good. I appreciate uh, your, your lovely wife, Christy, and your boys, Adam and Alec, uh, sharing you for a few minutes today because you had promised me we would go on site to a stream. And, and so if you give me a minute, I'm going to try and see if I can get us to the location where you promised to take me. And if I can get us there, I think the people that are watching this video will have a real treat to see the work that you are doing and the locations of where you are. I'm gonna step out of the screen and let you kind of comment. First off, where is that? Uh, um, that is, uh, that, that stream is called Woodley Draft. Up in North Central Pennsylvania, they have a, um, they call, you know, you, around Pennsylvania, you hear streams being called creeks and runs. Up in North Central, sometimes you run into them, they're called drafts. That's, that's okay. called Woodley Draft. And it, it's a tributary to Drury Run right outside of Renovo, Pennsylvania in Clinton County. And that's just one of the streams we're currently working on. Surprisingly, you look at it, it looks you know, picturesque and it looks clean, but it really isn't. Um, it's, it's very acidic. Uh, there's some um, old clay and coal mining that was completed in the watershed. And because of that, uh, the water is, uh, is acidic and it has um, elevated aluminum concentration in it. So, Surprisingly, that water right there is, is fishless. Well, it, it's, it's flowing beautifully. And, and you're saying to me that it, it's no fish life in that? There's no fish life in that, no. I understand. Well, the reason I bring that uh, to everyone's attention, I mean, the sound of that, the rapid sound of that, I'll let that play when I send out this video, is impressive. But I'm so disappointed, although it's clear and it's flowing, it's, it's fishless. So talk to me about mine drainage and aquatic life and what happens? A lot of people think that mine drainage comes from coal and that's uh, not really accurate. What it does come from is this mineral pyrite, which is, I have a piece of it here. Um, but pyrite, all pyrite is, is fool's gold. It's a ferric sulfide and it's, it's found within coal seams. And when that reacts with uh, water and oxygen, it breaks down into ferric, hydroxide, which is essentially rust. So when you're, you're traveling around Pennsylvania streams and you see orange in, in, a, in a stream, that's ferric hydroxide, it's just essentially rust. And one of the big problems is that it also breaks down into sulfuric acid. And that sulfuric acid creates the acidic conditions we sometimes see in these streams. But it also leaches out other minerals that could be surrounding that cold steam. And uh, one, of the big, uh, one of the big problems is aluminum. A lot of times there's a fire clay layer around the coal seam and that acid water will leach that aluminum out of the clay and into the water and aluminum kills fish dead. So it, it is definitely a problem. Well, well, the Woodley Draft then, where I'm standing, if you were to take me here, what would be your on-site work, say for today, if we were there? Right now, we're, um, we're getting some baseline data. We have some uh, activity up in the headwaters where uh, reclaiming and reforesting uh, this old clay mine to hopefully uh, 
return the soil back to a, a good pH and thus the water coming off of it would, would then be of good pH and improve this watershed. But right now we're just kind of getting some baseline data so that we, once everything is completed, we can compare to it to make sure that um, we've brought this stream back from, from being polluted by mine drainage. Okay. You mentioned something about a study in Curransville. Is that correct? That's right. Yeah. What, what is that? Um, we have some activity in Clearfield County, too, with our partners, uh, Toronto Limited and the Clearfield Creek Watershed Association. There's also a watershed group there, the Anderson Creek Watershed Association. And uh, Kratzer Kranz Run uh, goes into Anderson Creek. It's a very similar situation. It has uh, a lot of coal and clay mining in its past. And uh, we're working right now on three projects there to return that stream back from from mine drainage impairment. And with that too, you know, we don't just a lot of times clean and leave. Um, we're trying to find out what happens as we clean that stream up. So there is some fish in that stream um, here and there. And what we're trying to do is um, we're trying to see how fish react once a stream is restored. So we have some pit tags on, on, um, on, some, uh, on some trout in that stream and we're following them over the year to see how they move as conditions change. Well, that's Jamie Schellenberger and his team. I, I, I did see a video posted, uh, the tiny brown trout, is that correct? Yeah, um, we have a situation there where um, there's some brook trout in the headwaters of that stream, and that's all, that's our, our state fish. And, but uh, locals have put in brown trout in some areas, and, and uh, that's a European trout. And we're trying to, you know, we're trying to save brook trout habitat, but one of the things that may occur there is once we return the stream from the water quality issues, the brown trout may push out the brook trout. And it's really nothing that's been looked at in real time before. So we're trying to find, you know, we're trying to find that out. Does that happen? And is, is that something that should concern someone else who's working on a similar situation? Very good. Talk to me about, if you would, the idea of planting trees and how to mitigate pollution in the Chesapeake Bay. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, th yeah there's a big push right now to reforest um, areas within the Chesapeake Bay to reduce um, sedimentation and nutrient loading going into the bay. But it even has some benefits even outside of that that is of um, concern for us in the mine drainage community. You know, we're, we're looking at um, trying to reforest these areas that were um, mined and reclaimed. A lot of times when they reclaim them, they super compact the soil and then uh, create like a grassland meadow type um, environment that wasn't what was there previous. So we're going back into these areas and actually reverting them back uh, to forest land. Um, and, you know, we're concerned with sediment, but, you know, you get, you get forest land back on an area too, and you can reduce the mine drainage coming off of that site. And then, you know, with the climate change that's happening, um, more forests mean more carbon sequestration. And um, there's, so there's so many benefits right now to reforestation and um, we're real happy to see that others are getting involved. And we have a pretty, we have a loose group of people come together and we're reforesting um, a lot of acres on uh, mine property. Is there anything you want to uh, leave us with as we look at this beautiful stream and how long you think it will be before uh, it does have aquatic life. Um, what's great about what's going on um, in our basin and in, in other basins too that, that suffer the consequences of mining is that w we're improving. The, the watersheds are improving. There's a lot of people doing this, a similar type of work to what I'm doing. And we're seeing big benefits and gains come back. Fishless streams becoming fishless. Um, streams that were, um, um, polluted now being considered class A and high quality by um, the Fish and Boat Commission and Department of Environmental uh, Protection. So there's a lot of good stories out there. Um, and uh, I think we're at the cusp in our basin of seeing some really drastic improvement in some watersheds because of some large projects that were, are being completed by, by numerous agencies and organizations. Well, I want to thank you for your time today. Uh, this has been very inspiring for me. I'm going to let the stream flow, as I always say, let the river flow, let this tributary flow, and we'll continue to work together. And one thing, Mar Marcia said to me, make sure that truck is, is in good working condition. I, I know she's always uh, asking you about the truck, and I know it's, uh, 
it's in good working condition, right? It's perfect. Well, I want to thank you for your time today, and, and please stay safe, you and your family. Be well. Thanks for having me. Bye-bye.